So as charges flow through a circuit device, like a resistor, you know what? Let's pretend like a light bulb, although technically light bulbs aren't ohmic because as they heat up, the resistance changes. We'll pretend they are. They lose energy due to collisions with the atoms in the wire. So we have a current moving to the right here. If we have a high voltage, let's say 12 volts, and here we measure 4 volts. How many volts did we lose going through this resistor? You can do the math in your head. 8. And because we know we're losing voltage in a resistor, we typically don't label it with a negative. We just say it's a voltage loss. And what that means, Paige, is every coulomb of charge that traveled through there lost 8 joules of energy because voltage is joules per coulomb. How is this energy loss manifested? It's typically transformed into heat energy. These objects heat up. The energy lost by charges is related to voltage drop since potential energy is QV. On your formula sheet for the last unit on electrostatics, we defined voltage as the energy per charge. And so I can get potential energy by itself, QV. And from that, we can derive Joule's law. So it says, fill in the steps below to find an expression for the rate at which charges lose energy. Power. And then check the units. Power is energy loss over time. And energy loss, we just said in a circuit, is QV over time. And then if all of you can circle those two, the Q and the T. What is Q over T? It's on your formula sheet. Ooh, current. This is really power equals IV, although I think on your formula sheet, I probably wrote it power equals VI, I suspect. So power is the energy drop per coulomb of charge times coulombs of charge per second. If we actually check the units here, remember voltage is joules per coulomb. That's how we defined voltage. And current is coulombs per second because it's Q over T. Do you notice? The Coulombs cancel, and I get joules per second. This is watts. This is power. Okay. So power is measured in watt? Watts. This is how we're able to label light bulbs with power, even though it's not as obvious. Where's the work over time? It's actually you're moving charges through the system in a given time. And so there is a force times distance occurring. Yes? Technically, although in this unit, because we're not going to be dealing with speeds again, I'm going to get sloppy. And we're going to assume if we see a V, unless the question makes it obvious, it's a voltage. So this is Joule's law. Joule's law says power equals V times I. Ohm's law is V equals I times R. Joule's law is power equals V times I. Basically, in a circuit at any location, there are five things. The voltage, the current, the power. Sorry, four things. The power and the resistance. If you know any two, you can find all four. There's other ways we can write Joule's law. Ohm's law says... V equals I times R. So if you draw the line down the middle of the page, I could write Joule's law as I times R times I. There's V times I. Except what's a better way to write I times I? So another version of Joule's law is I squared R. When would I use that? Well, if I knew the current and the resistance at a location and I was too lazy to find the voltage, I can find the power of that. Or 
I can write this as V bracket V over R, because if I get the I by itself up here, it's V over R. So another version of Joule's law is P equals V V R. Although again, what's a better to write V time better way to write V times V? So another version is V squared over R. I hardly ever use this one just because of the way circuits are set up. Set up. There will be very rare situations where I know the voltage and the resistance, but I don't know the current at that location. So don't use it much. Use this one the most, this one the second most. Um, technical comment. Since we're finding the energy lost, really we should use the work energy theorem. We should actually use conservation of energy and the work energy theorem. We should say work equals the change in potential plus the change in kinetic. Because initially the charges are at rest. And when we flip the switch on, the charges start to move. There is a change in kinetic energy. but. Once the charges start flowing, they maintain a constant speed. If you're at a constant speed, what's your change in kinetic energy if you're at a constant speed? Zero. And so we're going to ignore this, and that's how we're able to say work equals just QV. But this is why when you flick a circuit on, you may notice for a split second the lights are dimming or something. And that's because it's having to get those charges moving in the first place. It is needing to pull a little extra energy from the system just to get them moving. And then you may notice, oh, now everything got back up to its regular brightness. Okay. Example three says, turn the page. Find the current in your house wires if you plug in a 1,400 watt hair dryer. Okay. What was that? Looks like a gun or a hair dryer. Okay. Fine, Aiden. What's this asking me to find? What letter are we using for current? What else do I know? Well, they told me how much power this device uses, 1,400 watts. What else do I know? Aiden, what else did they tell me? Look at the picture. Yeah, now this is AC, but Joule's Law still works for AC as well as we'll be looking mostly at DC. But yeah, the voltage is 120. Um, have I got an equation that has a P, a V, and an I in it? Yeah, this is Joule's Law. Get the I by itself, Aiden, my friend. That's what you said. We all heard you. What do you got? How many amps? So 11.7? A standard household circuit can only handle 15 amps. Could you plug two hair dryers into this plug? Nope. Nope. Blow breaker. It says mix and match the following appliances to their power ratings. I'm not going to ask you this on a test, but you're all going to become adults and you should know a little bit about what devices use the most power. What devices use the most power? The ones that move the most energy the quickest. How can you tell that? These are the ones that use or give off or require the most heat. So we have a computer, light bulb, hot water heater, microwave, clock, clothes dryer, kitchen fan. Which of those do you think is moving the largest amount of heat around. And your hint is it actually requires a special outlet. If you pull it off the wall, you'll see it's actually a 220 volt line running especially to this particular appliance. Which appliance do you think would have the highest wattage here? Closed dryer. Closed dryer. What's the highest number over here? You can cross that off. 
Which device do you think would use the next highest wattage, moves the most amount of heat around? Hot water heater. If it's an electric. Now let's go in the other direction. Of the remaining devices, which one do you think uses the least amount of power? And your hint is it can run off of a tiny battery for about a year. Yeah, these wall clocks are very low wattage. So about 0.1 watts. Oh, you know what? You probably know an average light bulb. What's the wattage of an average light bulb? I'm going to make the assumption all of you have replaced at least one bulb in your life. Yeah, now you're right around the generation where, I don't know if your house has the incandescent ones or if you've moved to LEDs. I know in my place I moved all to LEDs, but it's kind of just becoming economical to do that. So most of you probably still have an incandescent bulb kicking around somewhere, 60 watts. Okay, we have three devices left of the three remaining devices, which one do you think produces the least amount of heat? Why, why is it the kitchen fan? Because the computer has a fan built in to cool it up. Yes, yeah, the kitchen fan. So kitchen fan pulls around 150 watts. Then we have computer and microwave large. Let's look at microwave large large microwave, what kind of wattage do they have? Usually around 1,200. And a computer, and again, it all depends on the peripherals and what you plug in. These are just kind of ballpark figures. Usually pulls about 800 watts, which again means 800 joules every second. So we can now start to talk about electrical energy. If power is work or energy over time, I guess electrical energy is power times time. <sighs> Problem. Have I mentioned to you occasionally we don't have enough letters in the English alphabet We're running out? We, OK, look up. Look up, everybody, please. That would be electric field. That's electric energy. So if you want to, you can say something like, I see, I don't even know a good abbreviation because I was going to put E elect, but that might convince you it's electric field even more because there's an elect. And I'm only using one letter because it's not really a potential energy or a kinetic energy. It's an electrical energy, so I can't use any of those. I don't know. I, this is where my notation bogs down. Okay. Sorry? Uh, actually, what I should be doing is not using E for energy. Actually, capital U is the abbreviation for energy. And it's from, a, I think it's from a Latin word. I can't remember. I don't do that because when I started teaching physics on the provincial, on the formula sheet that the kids got, they use PE and KE. And I was like, well, I'm going to use the same notation. Why would I have them memorize two different notations for the exam? So... Also a bit of a problem, a joule is so small that typically your parents, or once you start paying your own electric bills, you don't get charged per joule, you get charged per kilowatt hour, which doesn't look like a unit of energy. People see the word watt and they think, Brea, it must be power. But look, 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 this is power times time. What is power times time a measure of? Energy. It is, it's energy. Not the preferred SI units, but it's got to be energy still. Okay, uh, One kilowatt hour is, well, a kilowatt is 1,000 watts. An hour is 3,600 seconds. It's 3.6 times 10 to the 6th joules. Typical household will use anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000 kilowatt hours of energy in a month. Example 5, 60-watt light bulb is left on all month. Let's make it a 30-day month because months have different number of days. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. How much energy will it use in joules? Okay. Energy is power times time. How much power is this bulb using? 60. How much time? 
30 days. So I guess it's going to be 30 days times 24 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds. Can you read it to me? 2592. How many zeros after that? That's one light bulb. Adults that don't have a strong math background would freak if their bill had jewels in the million. Honestly, they'd be in the hundreds or tens of tens of millions or hundreds of millions. They'd start to panic a little bit. And so BC Hydro, no companies charged by the jewel. They charge by the kilowatt hour. So B says, convert that to kilowatt hours. Well, if I want to convert it to kilowatt hours, I'll write down what they gave me. I want joules to cancel. I want kilowatt hours on the top. And I guess the conversion factor is one kilowatt hour is 3.6 times 10 to the sixth joules. How many kilowatt hours of energy does leaving a light bulb on for an entire month cost? Pause the video for a second. Apparently, someone tried to make me look foolish and they forgot to multiply by 60. No, I was explaining. I was explaining blah, blah, blah. Right. In fact, I would have gone 60 to the third power times 30 times 24 because I naturally notice these things. And I would have said the amount of energy one light bulb uses in a month is one, three, fives, a two, and four zeros. I would have said it's a one, three, fives, a two, and four zeros, which really would panic people because that's 155 million joules of energy and they wouldn't like their bill to have that. So now it's going to be, is that correct folks or am I wrong? That's correct. So it's going to be this number, 1555200000, divided by 3.6 times 10 to the sixth. And now they would say, okay, 43.2 kilojoules, that's a number most people are comfortable with kind of gut instinct getting, right? As I said, kilojoules, kilowatt hours. You might recall in Physics 11, I think I showed you the Mega Penny Project, bigger and bigger numbers in terms of how many pennies they were. And even past a million, it was hard for our brain to visualize, let alone a hundred million or a billion or anything like that. Uh, this brings us to a bit of a problem that we have. Suppose BC Hydro charges six cents per kilowatt hour. How much money will it cost you to leave a light bulb on 24 seven for an entire month? Well, you would go 43.2 times 0 0.066 cents per kilowatt hour. And it would cost you $2.60. They'd probably round up. Which, unfortunately, Paige, honestly, it's too cheap. It's too easy for somebody to say, eh, I'll leave it on, something that cost me a buck or two. So why do we ask you to turn the lights off and conserve electrical energy? Not for the money, it's for the planet. Not for the money, it's for the planet. BC has some advantages. We went whole hog into hydroelectric power, which after it's installed is a fairly green source of energy. But in doing so, we built all these dams. We flooded a bunch of areas, all the trees and the flooded areas. That carbon was eventually released back into the atmosphere. We also kind of wrecked our salmon runs accidentally. When I was a kid in elementary school, I think in third grade, I was asked to do a project on the major industries of BC. And the third biggest industry in BC when I was in grade three was salmon fishing. I doubt it's top 50 right now. Kind of, oops. Sorry? Solar has some advantages. The issue with challenges with solar don't work at night. And also disposing of the solar cells is not very easy. They're not terribly environmentally friendly. There are companies looking to do recycling. I got to be honest, 
Um, this is where I really disagree with some of the fundamental environmental movement. I think nuclear is the future, fusion and fission. And I think we can do it cleanly and safely. And I know there have been Chernobyl and there's been Fukushima. I, I say, okay, if you're an engineer and something goes wrong, you don't quit. You learn from the mistake and you build it so it can't happen again. And we have third, fourth, and fifth generation reactors that I think really we should be investing in. Because if we don't, I think there are countries that will. Uh, the advantage with nuclear is they work 24-7 and you can easily ramp them up or tamp them down, not shut them off, but you can easily, we need more energy, you increase the reaction rate, we need less energy, you decrease the reaction rate. So I know I'm in a bit in the minority, but I know if you talk to many physicists, they would say, yeah, nuclear is pretty safe, and we found ways to deal with the waste and things. Um, the big issue with nuclear reactors, originally they were all plutonium reactors, that was because that's what the US wanted for nuclear weapons. It doesn't need to be a uranium plutonium reactor, thorium works much better, and it's got a much, much shorter half-life in the nuclear waste. It's only a couple of hundred years, which that's deal we can deal with that, as opposed to you know tens of thousands of years. End of nerd rant. Efficiency. One more, we're done. Recall efficiency was, uh, well, technically it's power out divided by power in or energy out divided by energy in uh, or work out divided by work in, but work is a little trickier to spot in terms of electricity. Power is the one we're going to deal with the most because it's V times I. Oh, and then times 100 to make it a percent. That's not how I taught you. What I taught you was efficiency is going to be the smaller number divided by the bigger number. And this is where the out over in vocabulary comes back to bite us because our electric vocabulary in English is confusing. The power in comes from an outlet. Well, that's not confused. So that's why I kind of abandoned the out over in method. Yeah, you know, it's going to be the smaller number divided by the bigger number as long as you match units. Don't be going joules divided by watts, please. Example six, a 60 watt light bulb is connected to 120 volts AC. It produces 58 joules of heat and light every second. It's left on for eight hours. Electricity costs six cents per kilowatt hour. Find, oh, okay. Kai, what's A want me to find? Well, when in doubt, I equals question mark. Well, I right now have three things with current in them. Kai, I know that current is Q over T. It's also V over R. That's using Ohm's law. It's also, if I get the I by itself in Joule's law, P equals V I, uh, P over V. You can write those if you want to, but they're technically all in your formula sheet in disguise there in those three rows. Which one am I going to use? To... Oh, okay. How many watts? 60. Oh, let's write it in our notes. Let's write out the formula. P over V, so it's a 60 watt bulb plugged into a 120 volt AC outlet. Kai, I'll bet even you can do this in your head. How many amps? We're going to be pulling 0.5 coulombs per second. Because that's what an amp is. It's a coulomb per second. Zach, what does B want me to find? Read B, please. B comes after A and before C. Resistance. So right away, I'm thinking maybe Ohm's law. Let's see. Resistance is V over I. Zach, did they give me the voltage that this bulb is drawing? 120. Did they tell? Oh, we just figured out how many amps are flowing through it. 0.5. Ooh, Zach, can you go 100 divided by 0.5 in your head? I'll give you a hint. It's not 60. Thank you. Dividing by 0 0.5 doubles it, right? Units, it's resistance. What were the units for resistance? No, I'll give you a hint. Ohms. Yeah. Ohms. 
Did you say ohms or you said volts the first time? I thought so. Okay. Danica, what C want me to find? Hmm. Well, that's going to be either power out divided by power in. You know what? I think it's going to be power out, not because I don't see joules or energy. Well, how many watts is this bulb? That's what it's sucking in. How many watts are we getting out? We have to be careful. How many joules are we getting out? According to this question, Danica. It produces what? So read me the sentence. That, keep reading. Every what? Every what? You know what? This sentence here is joules per second, which is watts. They just didn't say the word watts. So I can put the 58 here. My units do match. I'm not going joules divided by watts, page. I'm going joules per second divided by watts, which are identical units, and then times 100. Wait a minute, Mr. Duick. You're telling me this bulb is 96.7% efficient? I thought incandescent bulbs were terribly inefficient. Well, only if you look at how much light energy you get. But they're actually very efficient if you zoom out. Your heating bill is lower by exactly the amount of heat they gave off. It's not wasted energy, especially in the wintertime. So LED bulbs are good. They are. But about 10 years ago, some well-meaning politicians in Ottawa, they decided to ban incandescent and bring those spiral CFC bulbs, those spirally ones, you know the ones I'm talking about? Those ones have mercury in them. And so to dispose of them, you have to dispose of them properly. And most people didn't. They just tossed them in the trash. And mercury is one of the things we do not want to get into the environment. We've already got a bunch and we don't know how to get it out. So. Go to LEDs if you can, but don't do the spiral ones. They're not very good. And an LED light, sorry, an incandescent bulb, if it's in your house, especially in the winter, it's actually, if you zoom out, not efficient, not inefficient at all because you're getting most of that heat back, Brea, to lower your heating bill. Uh, in fact, they even make a toy called an easy bake oven, which basically uses the heat from the bulb to bake things, right? Easy bake oven? Yeah. You got one of those? Pardon me? No, but I wanted one. It was free brownies. I was oh, in. I know, right? How could you not? But I think what you really ended up with were lukewarm, mushy kind of cake dough that was edible, but whatever. D. Sorry? Oh, they want me to find energy? That's going to be power times time. So how much power is it using? 60. And it says for eight hours. So I guess that's going to be eight times 3,600 if I convert it to seconds, I believe. That's one hour. That's eight hours. It's on for eight hours. Oh. Right? Power, it's power times time in seconds, and eight hours in seconds is eight times 3,600. Uh, 60 times eight times 3,600. It is eight hours, right? I was going from memory, but I think it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So this would use 172830s, zeros. One, seven, two, eight, three zeros. One million seven hundred and twenty eight thousand joules of energy. Or if I wanted, con did it say joules or did it want it in kilowatt hours? It didn't say. I'm going to convert it to kilowatt hours as well. So it's going to be one seven two eight three zeros divided by three point six times ten to the sixth. You don't need to memorize the kilowatt hour conversion factor, Sarah. If I want you to do a conversion, I will give you the three point six times ten to the sixth in the question, even though it's pretty easy to derive. Mr. Decimal, Mr. D. 
and I get 0.48 of a kilowatt hour. Kilowatt hours. And now I can tell you how much this would cost. It says it costs six cents per kilowatt hour, so I go 0.48 times 0 0.06. Was it six cents per kilowatt hour? I haven't changed the numbers. I think now we're up to about 8.8 .8 cents per kilowatt hour, but still ballpark, we're, we're reasonably accurate. And I get, again, this is the problem. Leaving the light on costs you what? Three cents. So why do we shut the lights off? For the Earth, to reduce greenhouse gases and global warming. So that's Joule's Law. And really, if there's one thing I want you to take out of here, it's this. Since power equals V times I and V equals I times R, if I know any two things, I can find four things. Anywhere in a circuit, which we'll start solving next lesson, I can find the voltage, the current, the resistance, and the power. I can start to analyze circuits. So next lesson, which for you folks will be Friday, we're going to really get into the meat and potatoes of solving circuitry. We're going to look at what we call Kirchhoff's laws for solving circuits. If you ask me lesson three, and four are the two most important lessons of the unit. So if you can be there for that, that would help an awful lot. What's your homework? Study for the test. What's your homework for Friday? You can try number one. You can try number two. Try number five, number seven, and we'll just pause there. Not too much. <laughs>